23rd Psalm. It's a beautiful, beautiful psalm. Um, David is a shepherd, or was a shepherd. He became king, and he related back to the time when he was a shepherd boy. David wrote this psalm in the midst of being troubled in the pursuit of, or in the, uh, Saul was in pursuit of him, trying to kill him, trying to destroy him. And uh, so David writes this, and it's the most quoted, it's probably the most quoted text in the entire Word of God. Um, six verses, 118 words that meet you and I in our times of need. Now you stop and think about it. I've entered many a sick room. I've been in a place or a position where that I've watched people go out into eternity. Some without God in their lives and others knowing and slipping into the comfort and the arms of Almighty God. The Lord is my shepherd. You think about the beauty of that, just the beginning of that verse. What a wonderful shepherd that we serve. Used by most preachers. You've been to funerals. I've heard it quoted most funerals at the graveside, I'll use the 23rd Psalm. I remember citing that at my own son's funeral. And so this morning, um, I'd like to get you acquainted with the 23rd Psalm. And believe me, folks, there's nothing that brings any more comfort than this verse, these verses of Scripture, these 118 words is contained in these six verses. Turn with me now to the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul, he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You think about that. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Beloved, if you're young or you're old, this morning you're walking through the valley of the shadow of death. And you have nothing to worry about if you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You know, I've heard so many people say, oh, I'll get even. Let God do fight your battles. Let God do the evenness, okay? Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And you want to know the beauty of it? I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let's pray. Father, if we look at the Word of God today in this wonderful text, this wonderful verse of Scripture that brings so much comfort. Father, as you laid it upon our heart early in the week, and we tried to get away from it, but yet you kept bringing our mind back to it. And Father, we want to be obedient to the Word of God. Bless now, may some way go, someone go away today in the comforts and the assurance that the Lord is their shepherd and you will supply all of our needs and all of our wants. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. We were kidding John on Wednesday night. We told John that the only reason he bought that hardtop convertible was to get a woman. And uh, John said no. He said sometimes God not only gives you your needs, but sometimes he gives you your desires too. And John said I always wanted a hardtop since Ford first come out with it, what, about 1957, 58, somewhere there? If you had that one, John, you'd have some money now. That thing's going for about 90000 on the open market, okay? But Psalms 22, you know, if you look at, look at Psalms 22, laid between 22 and 24 is some beautiful scripture. And it's the cry of the Psalms to the presence of God. Look at it. In verse 18 in chapter 22, you have the Psalms of the cross when they say, They parted my garments among them and cast lots up on my vesture. Now this is written 2,000 years before Jesus ever came on the scene. But yet the Holy Spirit gave David the wisdom to um, quote it almost as it happened in the New Testament. And then in the 24th chapter is the Psalms of the Kingdom of God. Look at it. In Psalms 24, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Beloved, I sat on my porch the other day. I love to watch the rain. Timmy don't, Timmy don't sit on the porch. He sits in the garage. And him and I had sat there and watched it rain. And, of course, Angie and Mom is saying, you guys are going to get hit by lightning. You better get in out of the storm, you know. And Linda says, I don't have enough sense to get out of the rain. But I love to sit and watch it rain. And I got to thinking when I was thinking on this subject, how that anybody in the right mind, for example, they say that we evolved from apes. If we did, why did they still have apes? Now you think about it. Think about that. You know, you crawled out of the land, you become this little thing, this look, but they still got all them things, you know? That's called advanced evolution, I guess, you know. Hogwash. Look around you. See the mighty hand of God. See the sunset that's so beautiful. And see the rain as it beats down. Amen. And the changing of the seasons. And somebody says to me, there is no God. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Beauty, isn't it? Look at verse 4. He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfulness. Who, look at verse 8. Who is the king of glory, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Go to verse 10. Who is the king of glory, the Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. You know, between Mount Calvary and Mount Zion are the green pastures and the still waters of Psalms 23. Let's look at it. Let's look at the first verse. The Lord is my shepherd. David had been a shepherd. He knew what it was for the shepherd to take care of the sheep. <clears throat> Now he's in a position that he pictures himself as a sheep. And he needs the shepherd to watch over him. Um, like lost sheep, we've all gone astray. Turn with me back to the book of Isaiah, if you would, a moment. Isaiah wrote this prior to, well, not backwards, forwards to the book of Isaiah.
and let's look at verse chap let's look at chapter 53 and I want you to see this do you do you believe that you go astray how many of you believe that let me see your hands I believe that occasionally we go astray now we try to set our course on the straight and the narrow path but every now and then the wolf will come in now the shepherd had a job to keep the wolves from the sheep and every now and then when we're on that path the wolf will try to come in oh Satan will try to get us and get us off of the path but what what Isaiah said in in verse 6 of chapter 53 of Isaiah all we like sheep have gone astray we have turned every one to his own way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all aren't you glad for the cross aren't you glad that Jesus came and he died and he's that great shepherd all we like sheep have gone astray now Watch this. Go to Matthew chapter 9. Go to Matthew chapter 9. Let's bring it up into the New Testament. Jesus saw people as sheep without a shepherd. In verse 9 and verse 36. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. You see, Jesus became that shepherd of the New Testament. But we do. And if you know the Lord, you have that great shepherd. Let's go to the book of John for a moment. In John chapter 10, let me give you a verse here. John says that he's the good shepherd that died for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Now David would have gave his life for those sheep. And Jesus came and became that shepherd that he gave his life that we can have eternal life. Now, let me give you a couple more scriptures, and, and you can run with these. Go to the book of Hebrews for a moment. Just go to the book of Hebrews, and I want you to see this. Now, he was not only the good shepherd that died, but he was the good shepherd that rose again. Look at verse 20. Now, the, the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. You see, he is the great shepherd. Now, you're there, just, go, just jump over a couple books to 1 Peter. And this Peter says he's not only the good shepherd, but he's the great shepherd. Chapter 5 of 1 Peter. Verse 4, chapter 5 of 1 Peter, verse 4. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, he shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. You see, the Lord is my shepherd. And it's made very clear throughout the word of God that he is that great shepherd. And that great shepherd, you know what he does? He provides for the sheep. Watch this. He says, I shall not want. I shall not want. Now, we do, humanly, we want things, don't we? We want things that we don't even need or shouldn't have. My wife is fixing to go to a rummage sale, uh, fixing to have a rummage sale when they have the citywide rummage sale. But you know what she did yesterday? And I was mad because I couldn't go because I had to work. 
She went to a rummage sale to buy more junk. But she did find a good coat for the boy for a dollar, you know. Isn't it amazing how did you, uh, 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 Brenda, you, you, you used to do that. I don't know if you still go around to rummage sales and resale and the whole bit. But isn't it amazing how you go to a rummage sale? Now, you have a rummage sale to get rid of stuff, right? Okay, you, you, you want to make a little bit of money. But you get an old raggedy T-shirt and somebody's got $2 on it. Now, they, they really don't want to sell that thing. You know, I mean, I, Devin and I went down to Southern Ohio, and uh, I went over to get us a sandwich, and I come back, and he'd sold a whole bunch of stuff. And I said, oh, you did good. He said, yeah, I give it all away for a dime, <laughs> you know. And he got rid of it. He said, Papa, you come down here to get rid of it. I shall not want. You see, God is enough. Not just I don't want, but I shall not want. See, look what it says. It says, I shall not want. In other words, what's he saying? God will provide all of our needs, every one of them. Now watch this in verse 2. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Good food, good rest good provisions i was in a restaurant somewhere down in southern ohio remember what was that it said good food uh good food good god something the other i don't know it was comical it was kind of comical how they had it but he re, he 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 leadeth he he maketh me to lie down in green pastures he leadeth me beside the still waters you see, if you look at this, the green pastures are the scriptures of the Word of God. See? And the still waters is the comfort and the peace that only God can bring in your life. You know, there's times when, when it just seems like nothing is going right. But yet you drop to your knees or bow your head or... Even be driving and you're saying, God, would you take care of this situation? And God will do it. God will do it. You see, he restoreth my soul. Revives. When I am down, you ever, you ever get as a child of God, you get down and out? I know I've been there many times. I think I, in so many words, said to my wife this morning, I wonder what would happen if we didn't show up today. I said, every bone I got aches. But you know, I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that. See, he restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Why do you serve the Lord? I mean, let's be honest. Why, why are you here this morning? Is it out of duty? Is it out of obligation? Or are you wanting to get something from God? I hope it is that you want to get something from God. The paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Now watch this. In other words, he guides you as you go along. All of the glory of God is contained in these verses of Scripture. Now watch this. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Do you realize that as you walk every day, you draw nigh unto the last breath that you're going to take? You see, the Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die, and then the judgment of Almighty God. You see, we can go through this life, we can go through the, our entire life fooling individuals. Letting the preacher think and letting the congregation think and letting our family think that we have peace with God. When all along we know we don't. 
But yet one day you'll stand in the judgment of Almighty God. Me. My wife. I can't stand for her and she can't stand for me. And, I, and, and God knows I'd do anything in the, under the sun for her today. But it's something she'll do on her own. It's something that you'll do on your own. You see that you'll stand before God as you walk through this valley of the shadow of death. But he goes on, and what's he say in that? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. There's no evil thing can hurt me. Well, maybe a snake will scare me occasionally, but it can't do me no harm. See? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow, I fear no evil. And why don't I fear any evil? Because God is with me. God is guiding me. God is destined my path. See? Thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Now David relates back to that time that he carried that rod and that staff and he could beat off that critter as it come to destroy the sheep. And God can do the very same thing in our lives, folks. He can keep the enemy away from us if we trust God. He can keep the enemy at bay's length if we trust God. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Verse 5. You see, God takes care of and watch this. Thou anointest my head with oil. You see, David relates back that when, when Samuel the prophet poured the oil over his head. And we need to look back. We need to occasionally go back to that time that when God poured that Holy Spirit out on our lives. You know, as I, I and I often wonder as Christians get saved, they want to, be on fire for God. And then all of a sudden, they, they become cold and indifferent. They get saved and, boy, they just can't wait to get the house of the Lord. And then they get enough religion to last them all week on Sunday morning. Ouch. Am I right? Occasionally, we need to go back, amen, and renew that which we have with God. Now, you can only be born once, one time. You don't get born again and again and again. But we need to go back to that day. And David relates that when he went back to that day when the prophet anointed him with oil. And that he had that rod, that comfort. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. And my cup runneth over. See? Now, you want the best part of this whole thing? Here it is, verse 6. Verse 6. Even though God is our shepherd, and God provides all of our needs, and we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, Watch this. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. If I'd look back, I was close to 30 years old before I ever come to know the Lord. And I've not regretted a day of it. I've heard people say, oh, that God that you serve, he's a God that Oh, he takes your loved ones. He's a God that does this. He's a God that does that. Let me tell you something. The Lord is my shepherd. He takes care of everything in my life. And as I approach that final destiny, as I approach that final moment, I know that he's going to be there when I cross over Chile, Jordan. And I can lay my hand in the nail-scarred hands of Jesus. And he'll escort me into the kingdom. You see, because Brother John, 
He has a mansion for me. Amen. You want a room, you take it. I want my mansion. I don't care where it's at, and it ain't going to be a little old log cabin in the corner of glory land either. God has promised me great thing. He said, I have not seen, ear has not heard all the good things that God's got in store for you. And you know how you get your rewards every time you lead a soul to Jesus. Everything that you do for the Lord, you just add up more and more and more in the kingdom of God. But we as earthly people, we're earthly minded. Am I right? As earthly people, we're earthly minded. And we need to be spiritually minded. We need to be spiritually minded. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Make David's shepherd your shepherd today. If you don't know the Lord, make, make David's shepherd your shepherd. The shepherd will meet you care for you and give you eternal life. I like it like this. I, li I like it like this. Listen to this. God, my shepherd, I don't need a thing. You have bedded me down in lush meadows. You find me quite pools to drink from. True to your word. You let me catch my breath and send me in the right direction. Even when the way goes through Death Valley, I'm not afraid. When you walk at my side, your thrusty shepherd crook makes me feel secure. You serve me a six-course dinner right in front of my enemies. Now you think about that. You serve me a six-course dinner dinner right in front of my enemies I heard brother belt talking about getting a steak was about that thick one time that's what I like to picture that that God will provide me a six course dinner you revive my drooping head my cup brims with blessings your beauty and love chase after me every day of my life I'm back home in the house of God for the rest of my life. Let's pray. Heads and hearts are bowed in prayer. Let me ask you today, do you really know the Lord? I mean, have you truly, truly been born again? And only you can answer that. You may have went to church from the time that you was a child but you never truly came to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ think about it for a moment can you remember the day now, I, I, I don't I don't ask you to remember some folks can remember the hour and the time and the day and the year that they got saved. But if you can't never remember experiencing a time when you went one-on-one -on -one with God, then you need, you, you need to make peace. You see, because we're all walking through that valley of the shadow of death, one day we're going to stand in the judgment of Almighty God. Are you prepared? While we tarry just a moment, are you ready to meet the Lord? Can you truly say, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord one day? I don't know about you, church, but some days I kind of look forward to that. Knees won't hurt anymore. The fingers won't ache. 
And I'll be ushered into that beautiful kingdom. I'll go look up old Mom Woodyard. Her and I'll shout a little while around the throne of God. And then I'll look up my daddy. Because I can remember the time when he come and laid it on the altar. And I can remember the time that he said to me, Ron, I'm a dying man. And I can remember when he said, I'm just a little bit closer home than I was yesterday. Are you satisfied? All right, Sister Belt closes in prayer.